Hello, everyone, and welcome to the service of worship on the, the Sunday of July 11. The community of Annesley United Church in Markdale welcome you with an open heart, wherever you may be, at home, in your car, watching us from your iPad, on your computer, with family or friends, we are all called to turn to God and worship today. Before we start our celebration, we will turn and invite God in our life, in our home, and we also pray that the light of God will inspire us today to do the call that we are invited to do like John the Baptist, to proclaim and prepare the way of the Lord and bring the light to others with our own conviction. And as we are called to worship, let's pray for one another and let's keep to this celebration our neighbor, our friends, those who are sick and heal, those who have requested our prayer. And we want to thank Laureen for this wonderful prelude before the celebration today. It always helps us to be in the presence of God when we do have a chance to deeply reflect in our life. So let's worship together. The earth is God's and everything in it. We belong to our God. Lift up our voice in praise and thanksgiving. We lift our voice in glory and honor to God. Friend, let us pray. God of grace and glory, renew in us your presence this day as we gather to bless your name and sing your praise. Bless us with your glorious love and your guiding light. Strand us each and every one, and each of every hours of our day, through the power of your Holy Spirit and the wisdom of your Holy Word, in hope and in joy we pray. Amen. And now, let us sing together a wonderful world. them grow. 
That's a wonderful word Yes, I think to myself What a wonderful word And my friend, we are invited once again to turn to God with our petition, our prayer intention. And our prayer as a church, as a family, as we turn to God, let us pause and reflect in our own life, our own intention, and as we carry also with us those who have requested our prayer. How many times O oh Lord, do we live in unbelief? Our doubt surround us, and we find it hard to know what is true and what is real. Help us, gracious Savior, to know what is right way for us to live according to God's holy word. We ask for forgiveness. Forgive us the way in which we live, according to what is right in our own eyes. Help us, merciful God, to look beyond, knowing Jesus only as a good teacher, a righteous and holy men. Forgive us when we fail to understand and accept that Christ is truly the promised Messiah, your Son. Forgive us when we forgot that Jesus has walked to village to village to proclaim the good news. Forgive us when we forgot that Jesus have given his life for us, when Jesus have taken time by himself to pray and ask for your guidance. Help us, guiding Holy Spirit, to open our hearts to be led and taught in the way of the kingdom of God. Sometimes we don't see through our own eyes what the kingdom of God is. Sometimes we forgot that the people around us are also disciples who are following God and who are showing us how to live as a disciple. Forgive us when we seek to please others more than we seek to love and please God. Help us, Holy One, to turn our hearts to offer our prayer. May our prayer be not only a prayer of request, but a prayer where we take time to listen to you, to talk to you, and to do your will. May our prayer be inspired by the Holy Spirit so that we can do your will. We can hear you talking to us so that we can 
proclaim the good news. We ask you today to forgive us some time because we look only for ourselves. We ask you to help us to be a true disciple. And we ask you to accept who we are even with our imperfection. We know, O oh God, that you love us and you care. We ask you to be our guide, our light, and our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, together, we will sing this prayer that Jesus has taught us, calling to God as our Father, as our Mother, as our friend, the one who will help us to live our life accordingly. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. This passage is an accounting of the death of John the Baptist. Warning, it's a grisly story. Jesus' name had become well known to King Herod. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he's Elijah. And still others claimed, he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because John feared John, Herod feared John, and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. 
The king said to the girl, ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried into the king with a request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Our next hymn is from Voices United, number 577, I've Got Peace Like a River, verses 1, 2, and 3. I'm sure you have carefully listened to the scripture this morning. A very deep and a very touching story about John the Baptist. The death of John the Baptist. As we all know, if you want to understand and learn the scripture, you do have to know and receive the concept of the Old Testament to understand the New Testament. And if you want to understand the New Testament, you cannot do it without the past story in the Old Testament. Today, the Gospel of Mark is a very intense, very detailed, and very dramatic, the death of John the Baptist. Even some people were considering John of reborn from the dead for what he was doing. He was disturbing, and that was not well accepted. They did everything to track him down and have his head. But this story, it's not for us to focus really on 
the detail on how they got the head of John the Baptist. But this story is part of John the Baptist's journey and mission, suffering, and dedication to God's call in his life. John the Baptist, like John the Baptist, proclaimed the gospel with humility. The true disciple of Christ followed the path of humility without appropriating prophecy. In the gospel, Herod, as John killed, to satisfy his wife and his daughter. John the Baptist finally had a very short period of life, very brief to announce the word of God, but have touched many life. He was a man whom God had sent to prepare the coming of his son, before his life was cut short as a banquet at King Herod. I'm sure we all remember the Christmas season when we hear that John the Baptist is there to prepare the way of the Lord. That was John the Baptist's life and mission. But... His mission and his life was disturbing, was not accepted. But what did John the Baptist do, really? Above all, proclaim the Lord, announce the Savior was not far away, that the kingdom of God was near. And he had done this with force. And he was baptizing. You probably remember and recall when we say John the Baptist also, preparing the way of the Lord, but Jesus turning to John for baptism and John baptism people who have baptized many people. He urged everyone to convert he was strong in his word and a firm believer. And that was disturbing. John the Baptist, a man of truth. So the first thing John the Baptist did was to proclaim Jesus, but without taking all on his moral authority. Like I said, it is not an easy gospel, but indeed, John, his life, even short as it was, he was giving the opportunity to say, I am the Messiah because he had great moral authority, but he did not. People will find him, asking him if he was the Messiah. And he always said the truth. The one to come. He is to stay humble and true. But at this possible moment of temptation and vanity, John the Baptist could have, could have, taken the pose with false humility, but it did not. The gospel tell us that he counseled everyone to convert. He was a straight man, direct to the point, and honest and loyal to his fate. No, I am not the Messiah. After me come a person who is stronger than me and whose sandal 
will feed and walk on the earth. I am not worthy. John the Baptist is clear, and it did. He didn't steal the title or the role. He did not appropriate the, profes the profession. So this is the second thing that John the Baptist does. Be a man of truth. The third characteristic of John the Baptist is imitation of God. And even Herod, who had killed him, believed that Christ was John the Baptist. He imitated God, especially when he's stopping down to death. A dead on the same type that Christ, a shame like a thief, a thief like criminal on a cross. John the Baptist, icon of a true disciple. John the Baptist, dead is humiliation. John the Baptist also had his garden of olive tree. John the Baptist did prepare the coming of the Lord Jesus. In prison, when he thought he had made a mistake, he sent his disciple to ask Jesus, Tell me, is it you or is there someone else? And Jesus responded to John the Baptist as the Father responds to Jesus, I am he. Today in our life, we also meet people like John who want to do goodwill, who want to do the one who proclaim the good news. How do we react to them? How do we welcome them? Last week in the gospel, we were called to be disciples of Christ how do we react when someone invites us to be like John the Baptist and to prepare the way of the Lord in our life, in our community? Are we questioning the person who's inviting us to be like John the Baptist? Or are we willing enough to open our hearts and be a John the Baptist in our society. The role of John the Baptist is very simple. It is a role of gift that was given to us at our baptism that we have learned to reflect on, that we have learned that Jesus has done this before us, and Jesus followed John the Baptist calling us, his disciple, to proclaim the gospel. As we saw last week, sometime it could happen that our messages, or being messenger, it's not easy. We may not be welcomed by everyone. But if we have conviction, just like John the Baptist have, we can change the world. We can make a difference. Not to please, but to bring the truth and life. The only thing we can do is to profess the truth and be real. In the last couple years and a half, we have been together trying to understand how our world is changing. Did we learn something? Are we open to share what we have learned? COVID-19 have affected many people. 
How do we react to what we have learned through these last couple months? Have we turned to God and asked him? Have we turned to God and listened carefully and deeply what God is calling us to do to make a change for a better world? Everything we have learned in our society, in the news, in the world, here in Canada. Are we ready to change? Are we ready to make the way for the good Lord to make his way? To show the love and compassion of God. And that is what John the Baptist were doing and was not accepted. Just to remind you, in life, we can only do what we can. But if we believe in what we do, result is not for actually right now. The result will come. Since I've been preaching with you in the last couple weeks, we have talked about many concepts of the gospel, the Samaritan, the fruit, the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. And we also talk about the seed. John the Baptist was doing all of that. Seeding and providing seed to people to convert. Whatever you do, whatever we do as Christian in our life, it doesn't mean that what we seed in the ground is for today. We seed because we believe that our word, our action, will reveal love and compassion. When you plant a tree, when you plant a flower, it'll take a season or a few seasons to see some result. And John the Baptist knew each words coming from his mouth, from his heart, and from his life will take time. And the full example of that is today, as Christian, we are still wondering how can we follow the gesture of John the Baptist and preparing the way of the Lord. May your journey be full of love and compassion, and may your journey be an example of you, of me, preparing the way of the Lord to come. Amen.
us pray. Gracious God, pour out your mercy on us. Where there is despair, fill up with hope. Where there is sorrow, fill us with comfort. Where there is sin, fill us with forgiveness. Where there is hate, fill us with hope and love. Where there is worry, fill us with assurance. Gather us in your arm of your grace and glory that we may reflect your glory with honor and praise all day of our life. In your holy name we pray. Glory God, we thank you for trusting us to reflect your glory, for claiming us as your own with all of creation. We give you thanks and praise as you receive this gift of our prayer, offering with the bottom of our hearts, blessing all together, all our action, bless them, our words and intention, that they turn as a gift of our life in honor of you and your glory. And we pray to your name. Amen. And now we will sing Voice United 619, Healer of Our Ever Ill. My friend, before we receive and pray for God's benediction today, there is many thanks and gratitude that uh, I want to express to many people. As you know, with COVID-19 since 2020, March, many institutions, 
Many churches and businesses have been affected, especially for us here at Annesley United Church in Markdale. As many other churches, we were not able to worship together face to face in the church, in the building of God. This experience of COVID-19 have brought us to come up with many and many different options to continue to bring the good news to those who were seeking God's words and good news. Here at the church, the board member have worked strongly and very with a devotion to make sure that they were able to provide their community and the people of Markdale who were seeking and around the world. Because these celebrations that we are having right now with you are seen by many and many people. So today, it is our last videotaping as we are presenting to you for the last year. We're inviting you to follow us on the website for more detail. The Church of Ananisle and the board member is looking to reopen the church to worship in person as a live stream, probably at the end of August and begin, uh, beginning of September of this year. So we invite you to carefully watch the news and follow the Facebook or the uh, website for more info. But first of all, these services were brought to you because of many people who have devoted their time and their knowledge and ability of bringing this to your home, to your car, so that you can pray and we can still be a family together, family of Christ. First of all, the director of these production, David, also Tim, the producer, and Carol, and also we need to mention Patty Shaw here at the church who have been in the background working many hours. We want to thank also Dale Fawcett and Mark for all their dedication and commitment to make sure that the board member of the church will be providing a service to you. We want to thank also the follow that have been preceding me to preside these uh, celebration with you, Reverend John Smith, Reverend Chris Smith, and Reverend Cathy Underwood. I have been with you since May 9. This is the 10th service together. It was a privilege and an honor to pray and to worship and to share my faith with you all. I also want to acknowledge John, Edder, Howard, Lynn, Michael, Michael Leach, who we have heard him at the organ at many times during this celebration, David Fries, Bill, Chris, Dale Bear, Ted Spencer, also Sheila Ball, and Melinda, Vivian, Mary, Barbara, Corny, and Laura, and many of you, and especially to Lorraine, who have helped us also, Lorraine Bess, who have helped us to worship with music. If we have forgot some of your name, we want to, you to accept our gratitude in our prayer for your service, for providing many people and helping many people to worship God. 
as we continue to all of you at home who are listening today, we hope that these celebrations were an instrument and a gift from God to help you to be a better disciple and take time by yourself to pray. Please don't give up. Don't give hope. God is always there. In any struggle that we have been through in our life, God is always before us. Always look ahead and pray, and I'm sure that God will help you to see the light and the hope that you're looking for. Anisle United Church will welcome you very soon in person for service, and it will be a different live stream service that will also be carry on to your home for those who will not be able to join us. At this time, this is my last service with you, and I will pray for all of you, and I'm inviting you to pray for me, for my journey with the Anglican Church as apostolate toward the ordination. May God bless all of us and keep us in his love. And now, let us pause and ask for God's benediction. Brilliant children of light, go now to shine with God's glory and love. We will shine brightly and love freely. Honor God with all that you say and do. We will make the world a better place and a brighter place for all to live. And may the blessing of our Lord be upon us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.